God snatched you from the hands of the devil and said, get it together. We should be together fighting one devil. One devil. We got one God. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, I don't have to say it that loud. 53. Uh, but 53, I, I read that number, and there was, a, I wish I could have sent a picture, but we were actually view, viewing the facility of our second location uh, the, other, the other day, last couple of Wednesdays ago, and as we were viewing it, uh, there was a picture that was taken, and we didn't know nothing of it, but if you look at the picture, I got to share it with you. I'll share it on Facebook later on. But if you look at the picture, me and Pastor, we're like 15 feet away from each other, but we are standing the exact same. Yeah. <laughs> I always said I was going to be like my dad, and I'm exactly like my dad. And it's not a, it's not a bad thing, but I was just um, reflecting on that picture, and it just to show that the longer that you have relation with somebody or the longer that you have a rapport with somebody you begin to follow who they are not just spiritually but physically because you've allowed them because this watch this because you've trust them to the point where you've allowed them to direct you in the place that God wants you to go because it's so true that relation often brings direction and if I didn't have a relation with my father, then I wouldn't have direction. And I say this all to say that over the years, and I'm, not, I'm just speaking for myself, but I know that you have as well. But over the years, you've had a relation with your pastor that has led to direction. And when you have direction, you have opportunities. So I say that to say that as young as I am, I've had the opportunity to have relation with my father. But at the same time, there's direction that has come from my father. And from that, the opportunities have arrived. That's good. And I want you to understand that before we get into this message, that it is critical, it's crucial to have relation. And I'm not talking about boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, and wife. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a spiritual relationship. Yeah. Because if you don't have a relationship, you don't have direction. That's right. In order for you to be successful and to follow who God wants you to be, you need to be able to have relation and direction. But I say that all to say that the word 53 is it, it's a, it's, it's a cool number. Because I looked it say, up. Say, 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 say that it's again. It's a cool number. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. It's older, older. And when I sent that picture, I'm not too sure if you could put it up when you get it. But um, I say that number 53 because 53 pops up in the Bible, very seldom in the Bible, but it does pop up. And why I say that is because the word perfect is used 53 times in the Bible. Oh, I'm not saying that your pastor is perfect. But what I am saying is that over the years the years have not been perfect the time to getting to 53 have not been perfect but now being 53 is rewarding and perfect in his eyes that's right 53. further on jesus christ we all know that he is the rescuer the word rescuer is used 53 times in the Bible. Meaning that the Lord has once a year have rescued you from something. Oh yeah. And you're still seeing the rescuer rescuing. Oh, somebody should get excited here right now. Hallelujah. Come on. If you've seen God rescued you from something that you shouldn't be here today, you should get excited. The rescuer is in this house, hallelujah. Praise God. And two more. Rescuer is used. Also the term I am is used 53 times. 
Wow, wow. 53 years of reassurance that I am. Woo! Wow. That no matter what you go through, and I'm not saying that you're 53, but specifically for you and for anybody who's possibly 53 in this place, there's always a reassurance that the Lord will say, I am. Mm. And if you've ever needed 53 years and 20 plus years of ministry, the, the, la the first thing that you really need to hear is I am. And that's the number one word of reassurance to know that you are on the right path. That whenever you face trials and tribulation, you can always turn back and hear that I am. <laughs> There's that picture. That's the picture. <laughs> and last one. In addition, the word pastor is used 53 times in the New Testament and 53 times in the Old Testament. Wow. Wow. That's good. I could go more in depth, but all this makes sense because the Lord is faithful yesterday, today, and, and forevermore. Yeah. Pastor was utilized equal in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Yeah. Meaning that your pastor has experienced the Old Testament, but the bloodline of a pastor was always deep down inside because the Lord says that I am. Yeah. And it's now reoccurring that the word pastor is now used in the New Testament. Meaning that the new creation of pastor leading up to 53 years, the word pastor, meaning the good shepherd, has always been in your bloodline. Oh, awesome, awesome. Stop. And as we get into the word now, I want you to really understand that uh, we, we don't really do this and, and, and we're not trying to idolize our pastor, but we celebrate our pastor and we celebrate and rejoice with him. So happy 53rd birthday Thank you, to son. you Thank many you. more to come. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. But let's get into the word. Let's I'm do ready. it. I'm ready. All right. I'm going to go to the book of First King, chapter 17. First King chapter 17. You're gonna have to read it, man, because I don't have my glasses. I'm 53 years old. 17, starting in verse 2, reading out of the NIV. When you're there, say amen. Here we go. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here. Turn eastward. And hide in the Kirith east of the Jordan. This is the brook. You will drink from the brook. And I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Kirith east of the Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook sometime later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land and father i pray right now in the name of jesus that you open up the ears of every single person that is in this house we rebuke you satan right now in the name of jesus you have no power no authority in this house remove all distraction all doubt anger worried everything that is not of you remove it right now put that sponge in their mind so they can absorb your word like never before anoint my lips and let it be you speaking through me father holy ghost have your way in jesus name i pray and we all say amen and amen you may have a seat hallelujah all right so what we <laughs> just read it's very uh it's a lot of information but it's very crucial because at this point we, we are now being sent out. Elijah is being informed by God to go. He says, depart from here and turn eastward. And that's where he's going and he's telling him to depart from here to go there. Because it's, it, it's understand this, that this will not be that. 
Meaning what is happening here at this current moment will not be what will happen there. And that's a reassurance for somebody because we fi often find times where we're stuck in a place where God is telling us to move, but we're too scared to move because we think that our current situation will follow us. Elijah was bold enough to have the courage to move when the Lord told them to move. And one thing that stood out to me, Pastor, is that the Lord guided Elijah one step at a time. There, there was pieces of instruction given to him. What do, we, what, what, what do you say to the people that want the full-blown itinerary before they get to their destination? Elijah, the, the thing is, is he, he followed God one step at a time, but he followed God by faith. Because it had to take faith for him to go to the brook. And to go to the brook didn't make no sense. And then it says that God's going to send some ravens to go feed them. If you know ravens, ravens, the birds that eat everything, how are you going to trust something like that? I remember in 2005 when I gave my life to Christ, 2006, didn't waste no time. God sent me to a dry place, a place that didn't make no sense. And I had to walk by faith every step, just like Elijah. And he sent me to Sarzamora and Poplar, where it wasn't too popular. Amen. <laughs> sent me to a place filled with prostitutes and heroin addicts and so much chaos. But I walked by faith and not by sight. And I trusted God on that move. And when God tells you to move somewhere and he's going to bless you, even if it doesn't make sense, if you don't show up, the provision's going to show up and you're going to miss it because you're not there. And I'll, I'll, I'll move on until, well, let's go to the, the next thing that as far as me moving forward, just like Elijah moving forward. That's just one word is being obedient and walking by faith and trusting God when it doesn't make no sense. I don't know if there's anyone here that's in a situation where it doesn't make no sense and God is calling you for something and all you got to do is just trust God because your ways are not his ways. And your thoughts are not his thoughts. Amen? Just remember that. Point number two, it was, point number one was God leads Elijah step by step. And we'll get further in that. Point number two is that to escape to the brook, it, that was maybe his hideout, his secret place, his, his, his place where he will hide. And, and, and it, was, it wasn't too much to, to hide him, which is, which is something because... If you know the whole story, people were against him because he prayed for it not to rain for, 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 for three years and, and it didn't rain. So God sends him to the, to the brook, Kareth, not only to protect them, but to train Elijah in dependence upon the Lord. I mean, this is pretty cool because he sends him to a place and that it doesn't make no sense. And it's not just to, to hide him, it's to, to see if... if Elijah is going to really depend on God and trust God because you can't go somewhere where it doesn't make no sense if you don't have God on your side. You got to depend on God. You can't depend on the person next to you or de depend on your suegra or your comadre, your compadre, your best friend, your boyfriend. I mean, you can depend on all you want, but man and woman will let you down, but I already told you that God will never let you down. Might as well depend on him. Hallelujah. And here is Elijah in a season of drought that he had to depend on God. That's why he walks step by step with God by faith. Remember, step by step, not skipping steps. A lot of people are skipping all these steps and you skip a step and you end up like, uh, like when God told Adam uh, and Eve, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and take dominions step by step in order. What happened with Adam and Eve, they skipped the step. They started multiplying be, before being fruitful. And that's why you see what happens with Cain and Abel. And then you see what happens with all the, the, the chaos that takes place. So God had to find a just man, which he finds Noah. And Noah comes up out of the ark and God tells Noah, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and take dominion. God is a God of order. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, I can't wait to start preaching. Go ahead. <laughs> Is it hot in here or no? Some people are going like this. 
No, it's hot. Can we check the ACs? Amen. It is hot. It's like 110 out there. What? It's not that hot? No. 108? You can put cookies on your dashboard. It's on Facebook. And cookies will boom. <laughs> Trust God. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh -huh. So, for, <laughs> stop focusing. <laughs> I was thinking of cookies. But no, I did see that on TikTok that they're actually putting the bread in the, the, the I, mailbox I, and they're I'm actually not, making bread. I'm not in the a mailbox. TikTok yet. I'm still on Facebook. Right? Still, see, my, yeah, my, I saw it on my, MySpace. See, like you mess it. Okay. Folk, MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Focus. So, point number three, watch this. Who have MySpace? Anybody have oh MySpace? Oh my gosh. See, oh, my age. Okay, go ahead. So, stop. This is what I deal with all the time. All the time. It's funny when you got to deal with it just for an hour on service, but it's a lot. That's why he don't live with me no more. <laughs> God. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, but it's point number three. Just me and my wife and this this hot stuff right here. Yeah. Let me, let me hate him. Let me hate him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Point number three. Or verse number three, if we can put that back up if we have it. But it says, depart from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook of Kareth. Leave here, turn eastward, and hide. Oftentimes, leaders won't want to hear this. Because you are going to a place where you will no longer be noticed. And this is where it gets difficult because the real question is where you, will you go to a destination even though you won't be noticed? And a lot of people will say no because they don't want to be unseen. They want to be noticed. I asked, I talked to my class in GOD4 and I said, is the light is the light of God, is the, the light of Jesus shining on you or through you? And if it's yeah, shining on good. you, then there's a problem. But if it's shining through you, Hallelujah. you often get that comment, there's something about you, sister. There's something about you, brother. It is because I am humbling myself to be humble enough for the Lord to shine through me and not on me. And Elijah had to make a decision. I'm going to the place where I'm going to hide myself. Watch this. This comment is true. Kareth is the place where God hides you and holds you back from what you want to do. Some of us have a careth destination waiting for us but we don't want to take it and we don't want to start our journey because we are not going to be able to have what we want i can't watch this count it it's a strange thing that god is trying to hide elijah Here's the principle, and take this. When God chooses to hide you for a time, when God chooses to hide you for a time, He's preparing you for a greater purpose. Hallelujah. Elijah is now hiding, but it took courage to go to a careth place. Meaning it will take courage for you and your entire family to go to a place that is hidden. But can I tell you that your future, your purpose, and your destiny that God has for you is hidden? You need to often be alone to 
retrieve what God wants for you. So you don't need to receive your blessing in front of people. You don't need to be blessed in front of people. You often need to be alone so God can bless you. So what I'm trying to tell you is don't be scared to be alone because when you are alone, God sets you apart. And when you are set apart, God will give you the desires of your heart. So I wish I had any Elijah's in this place that will say, God, send me to a hidden place. God, send me to a place full of shadows because I know that you reside in the secret places, Father. So when I go to the secret place, I know that my blessing is waiting for me. So what I'm trying to tell you is pick up your bags and don't be scared to start your journey to that hidden place. You may be hidden for a moment, but I guarantee you that God will exalt you in the future, that God will elevate you, and God will let his shine, his light shine on you, but through you. So don't be scared to go to that dark place, because eventually, when you go to that dark place, it cannot remain dark for long, because the presence of God is enough that is more than able to bring light to that dark situation. So do I have any Elijahs who will go to the brook, who will go to the dark place? Father, so be it. I'd rather be hidden for a moment because I know that when it's my time to shine, the presence of God is going to shine right through me. Hallelujah. Ha. Good stuff. Put that, put that scripture back up, please. This kereth here, the, the root word of in Hebrew, it means to cut away. And to cut away is something that, to be an Elijah, it's not just to hide and protect you, but God has some cutting to do in his life. Some things that he needs to cut away from his life. And you think about it. You're going to be obedient, you're going to be faithful, walk with the Lord, go places where it doesn't make no sense. Then you can't just take just anybody. You can't take that attitude. You can't take all that stuff that you that, that you might have upon you or that pride. You got to depend on God, not think that you can do it on your own. So things need to be cut off your life. And I remember when I went to the brook, when I went to the place where it didn't make no sense, when I went to the place where, uh, uh, where, where there was just gravel, no building, no steeple, no fields, no nothing, no microphone, no, no cords, no, just a little poster board that said, need prayer, need a hug, when in reality, I'm the one that needed the prayer and I needed the hug myself, but I took the focus off myself and I focused on someone else, because I, I get it, I didn't ask what, what, what God, what you can do for me, because God was cutting things off of my life, God already had set me free, I asked God what I can do for you, and God said, you just go where I tell you to go, and look Look at what I'm about to do in your life. It might not make no sense where God is taking you, but God is large and he's in charge and he orders the steps of a good man. Hallelujah. And I've been through hell and high waters. I'd rather listen to the voice of God and go where he tells me to go and know that God is about to cut something. And you know what? When you can just stand there and let him cut when it hurts and be bleeding in the name of Jesus. God, God told Joshua, I want you to circumcise him before they cross over to the promised land. Can you stand there just bleeding and hurting but keeping your mouth shut and praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In pain, in tears, even if you don't like it, but you still lift up your hands and say, Father God, I'll go where you tell me to go. I might not want to go. I might not like it, but if you tell me to go, I will go. Come on, somebody say, I will go. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ha. That's the hard part when you stand there and you let them circumcise you. I mean, circumcising you at eight days is okay. But when you get circumcised as a young adult, adult, that's painful. And God is talking about, I need to circumcise your heart, man. I need to cut some things away from your life. You can't be going on with that attitude. You can't be going on with that alcohol and the drugs and the pornography and the adultery. And you can't be going on with all that. You, 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 you got to draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. And when I draw near to you, man, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. When you go to a brook, when you go to a place of cutting and pruning, those who abide in me, hallelujah, 
God is the vine and we are the branches and God wants you to abide in him, stay connected. But in order to produce fruit, you gotta allow God to cut some things that don't belong in your life. And once you allow him to cut things, relationships, and allow him to cut things that you that you wanna hold on to, and God said, man, either you're gonna follow me or you're gonna follow that. That will satisfy you for a minute, but I'll satisfy you for the rest of your life. I will give you things that no other person can give you. I will open doors that no man can open, and I'll shut doors that no man can shut. It's up to you. You gotta let go of this and hold on to my hand. I will take you places that you never, ever, ever, ever been before, and I'll show you things that you've never seen in your life. Come on, somebody praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn eastward. Huh. Meaning we got to go east. Has nothing to do with it and it has nothing to do with, with They don't go together. But when Jesus was born, the wise men were coming from the east. They were bringing blessings, gold, frankincense, and myrrh from the east. Elijah is going east. East is significant in this story. We need to understand that. Because we don't know, but there's something in the east that we need to get a hold of. I could just picture maybe just Elijah and the wise man meeting. Where are you going? Well, I'm coming to give you something. Well, I'm coming to give you something else. Not saying that they were together in the story, but there's the east in that. Really, it's significant. Because as the wise men were going to see Jesus from the east, they were taking gifts from the east. Meaning the gifts were in the east already, but he had to bring them to them. Elijah is going to the east. We don't know what goes on or what's going to happen in the east. Although he's at the brook, he was hidden, but he was in the east because the blessing was still there in that east turn to your neighbor and say all you got to do is go east go east it's that simple go east not right now sir <laughs> he's going east go east because <laughs> nowadays we'll tell you what street to take if you tell somebody to go east <laughs> where's east but you have to be spirit led to understand where is east Elijah didn't have a compass Elijah didn't have navigation system but he had relation come on and come direction on. Uh, yeah yeah it's coming together. Yes, sir. He had a relation with the Father that gave him direction. And with that direction gave him opportunity. So whenever he heard, go east, I don't know where I'm at, but I know that I'm in the wilderness. But you have to have a strong relationship right. with the Lord to know that when he says, go He's east, sermon. you know where to go. I'm talking to the people who have a strong relationship with the Lord. That when he tells you to go, you will go to the east. You may not know where it's sad but when he says go I'll go so turn to your neighbor and say go east go east Hallelujah. last thing that I want to discuss or at least that I want to say is that uh, point number four is that Elijah was being fed by the ravens you often see ravens on the side of the road picking at dead animals the shape form or way that you want your blessing will not always arrive that way when was it Sunday morning there was a lot of school supplies in the foyer and I walked in and it looked a mess I, for real, I said that looks a mess I go it's a blessing but it's a mess because the school supplies was there thank you but it was a mess but it was still what I've asked for. In other words, you can be ignoring the mess that is right in front of you. Have you evaluated that mess that is in front of you? 
because that mess may not necessarily be trash or mess, but it may not be in the shape, form, size, amount, color that you wanted it in, but it's what you wanted. So you better be grateful for what is right in front of you. So the school supplies looked like a mess, but it was an actual blessing, meaning Elijah was being fed by filth, by a mess, but he was still being fed. And you'll find those Christians that are never happy, never satisfied. But God, I wanted food, but I don't want it from a raven. Or manna, what is it? We're never satisfied with what God gives us. Because what God gives us is not always in a complete form. It needs to be worked on. The manna that fell, it was in a flake type. Like the Krispy Kreme flakes that fall after you eat oh, that donut. Oh, say it again. It was like that. It was flakes. I have to throw it in there because you're a favorite. But it, it was, it, they would see that and they would say, what is it? It was bread in God's eyes. It was the full blessing in God's eyes. But it was confusing in their eyes. Because they ignored that they still needed to work for it. Because before, when you get the manna, in order to get the bread, you need to go out and get it, bring it back home, and you need to work on it. You need to crush it. You need to grind it out. You need to add water. You need to mix it. You need to have the right consistency. Then you're not done because you still need to cook it before you can eat the bread. That's good. All that I'm trying to say is that what is in front of you could be what you've been praying for, could be what you've been asking for. So don't look at your circumstance and say, what is it? And start saying, God, you've given me work to do yeah. and yeah. I'm going to start working. Because whether it comes from the palace or whether it comes from the ravens, I'm still eating. Whether it comes from 1311 North Sasamora on Popular or whether it comes from the Westover Hills location, whatever the case may be, I'm still eating. So I don't care what you are going through and I don't need to know what you're going through. But all that I need to tell you is you need to start working for, for what is in front of you. Because the blessing came from a raven. We, we wouldn't eat from a raven, be honest. The most that I can do is a five-second ruin. That's it. <laughs> Son, let me tell you something. That mess that you saw, I, I made that mess. Mm. You know why? Because Channel 12 was here. Mm. Channel 12 said, said, Pastor, can you get all the school supplies and just start throwing them all in the box so we could get pictures of it? I don't know if you saw Channel 12, but it showed all the binders falling and making a mess. But you're right, because even though it looked like a mess, I made that mess. But God used that mess so we could come out on channel 12, and so many blessings have come from that mess. <laughs> because of direction and because of opportunities. We're gonna that, be that beak, that food came from an unclean beak of a raven to Elijah letting us know that a word a good word can come from an unclean unspirit individual have you ever met a drunk man or someone that is on drugs acts better than a Christian nicer than a Christian can tell you about Jesus and you say, get away from me, you smell, not knowing that God has sent that drunk man because a Christian can't do it. He'll still send someone that might be filthy in your eyes, but it's a blessing in his eyes because every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. And if you receive the blessing from the mess, that mess one day will turn into a message in the name of Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, God is in the midst of it all. And I remember going to this place going to this place where it didn't make no sense and we're going to the next one and we'll and I'll tell you what happened with the unclean 
and who is the unclean that God sent my way? So he sent the ravens and he began to eat because he realized that that was going to be the only source from where his food was going to come from. You were waiting for other opportunities, other people, other, opportun other jobs, other positions. It may only come from one source. So be grateful for what comes, which is the raven. Although maybe Elijah would have liked his food on a silver platter, it didn't come that way. So he accepted what God gave him. Hmm. Stop ignoring the blessing that God is trying to give you. <laughs> Lastly, one thing about Elijah that, was, that stood out is that he had courage. He had courage to go to the hidden places. He had courage to eat from a raven. He had courage to go by himself east. It was courage that got him there. It was direction by the Father, but it was courage in his mind. Because in order for you to go where God wants you to go, your mind needs to be right. Because every decision that is made throughout the day comes from the mind. I have the opportunity to eat a salad or to eat a burger. I eat a burger. But I have the decision to go left or right. I have the decision to listen to what I want to listen to, to associate who I want to associate myself. I have all that opportunity. But I guarantee you, it can go south quickly if the mind is not right. Elijah had to be in alignment and in the right mind to know where to go. And that's why we're led to courage. One, one of the things that, that it took courage for me is to, after the, the Brooks situation on Tarzan Water and Poplar, right in front of my face, the guy had put this building, was, was a Bellsbaum building, built in 1907, an old Bellsbaum building with bulletproof windows, building falling apart. And I didn't want to go in there because it didn't make no sense. But God kept on telling me to go there. And I, re and I refused it for a whole year. I wasted. The second year, now was for rent or for sale. And I went in there trusting God. Where's the help going to come from? Because I didn't have no money. The rent was $750 a month. Couldn't pay that anyways. I had lost everything. And here I am just trusting God, walking by faith, step by step. The ravens that were sent to my life was the prostitutes and the heroin addicts. From an unclean spirit that were not Christians not the church not the church people that came to help me it was the prostitutes and the heroin addicts that I have been in relationships with them that I didn't call them prostitutes or heroin addicts I called them by their name because I built relationships and I connected with them so when I opened the Sarsamora and Poplar, here comes all these ravens, all these prostitutes and heroin addicts that I built relationships with them, that I didn't judge them, but I loved them because that's somebody's son, that's somebody's daughter. It's not a heroin addict, it's not a drug addict, it's a son of the Most High. And if I can continue to be a blessing to them and know that God sent them to me and they're the ones that put the cheat rock and they're the ones that painted and they're the ones that built the church, it was the, the mouth of the people that say they're no good, they're just this, but God said, man, I'm sending you some ravens. If the church people don't want to show up, I'll send you some people to bless you. They're coming from places that you will never even imagine except the blessing from God, even when it doesn't make no sense. And if I would have never been obedient to God and shown up to the popular of Samora Street, three and a half years in the gravel, I didn't have a microphone. I didn't sit down like this or anything. Was, we didn't have nothing. But if you're faithful with the little and just trust God and praise him on that step, 
because a season is only a season. All this heat that is going on, the 104, 105, it's only a season. There's another season coming, which is called fall. There, you might be in a season that it might be hot in your life and things are falling apart, but know this, it's only a season. And if you keep on trusting God, that season will eventually change in the name of Jesus. And I've been telling people that we're in a shifting season right now, that things are about to turn around in somebody's life. The last will be first in the name of Jesus. There's somebody in this house that your life's about to change, but you gotta hold on tight. You gotta trust God. You gotta believe God. You gotta look up to the hills from where your help comes from. Your help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. And if it's not there, he'll make it be there. He'll create something out of nothing, but you gotta hold on tight to the hand of God. And God is such a faithful God, man. Because God changed my life. And when he changed my life, he, he sent this individual that changed my life forever because of my consistency, because of my faithfulness. He sent somebody, I saw you on the streets walking around doing ministry. What is it that you're doing? I can't sleep. God has put you in my mind and I just gotta give you something. And y'all know my testimony. I had nothing. I was struggling. I lost my house. I lost everything. And this man that I didn't even know, I never even met him. It was just a phone call. He comes to the church on Samora and Poplar that is falling apart. But hundreds and hundreds of lives have changed in a place where it didn't make no sense. And to me, it was like a mansion. And to others, it was like a hunted house because it was falling apart. Some people told me, like, when I drove up, I was like, oh, my God, I was scared because it looked like a hunted house. But we cleaned it, and we mopped it, and we took care of God's house. Because I remember that God said, if you're faithful with just a little, it might not be a lot to you, but God said, man, be faithful in the little. Because if I can trust you with this, I can trust you with the 404 Brady Boulevard building. Hallelujah. You can't come here until you're faithful in the streets. You can't come here until you're faithful behind the bulletproof windows. God says, I can't take you nowhere until you learn how to praise me on the step that you're on. You might be in a step with cancer. You might be in a step of financial. You might be in a step of a divorce. But I dare you to still praise the name of Jesus and say hallelujah. Because when you learn how to praise him on that, step, you go to the next step and the next step and the next step. Never stop praising. Praise Him when you're up. Praise Him when you're down. Praise Him when you have it and praise Him when you don't have it. But you never stop praising the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Praise God. But why we say all this message and why we say what we say and then why we did this message is to show you that there's several things in this story that stood out. One was it took courage to go east. You need to be okay to be hidden for a little while. You need to be able to cut some things, cut some friends, cut some relationships. Cut real, some real, real quick, that right there is very important because there's, there's some people in your life that will cut you off. They will cut you off from your journey with, with God. Relationship is a key, man. Who you surround yourself with, it's, a, it's key. If you surround yourself with people that are negative or, or, or talking that things that they shouldn't, you, you'll, you'll mess with your mind. And all of a sudden, you're going this way, and God said, where are you going? You'll be like a Jonah. And Jonah, you'll be going that way. And God said, I didn't call you to go that way. So be careful who you're connected with, who you're talking to, who's pouring into you. Because the devil's a liar, man. And you're going to miss the train. If you, if you don't get in with the shifting that's taking place, man, you're going to miss the train. Trust God. Believe God. Know that he's in charge. He is what my son said. And what the Bible says, the great I am. Hallelujah. That's who is in this house. Praise God. And I want to leave you with the reassurance that, first of all, everything's going to be all right. It's gonna be all right. Yeah, you should tell your neighbor that. Tell him it's gonna be all right. I'm serious. It is gonna be all right. Trust God, man. Because his blessing was in his hidden place. His blessing was in his darkest moments of his life. 
And that should give you reassurance that when it's dark and when it's alone and when you're lonely, that's an indication that it's going to be all right and it's almost over. And the glory of God and the presence Hallelujah. of God and the light of God will shine through that dark, empty place. But you gotta believe it. You have to. You have to. You have to be an eagle, because an eagle, when he sees a storm, he doesn't look at it as an inconvenience. It's a dark time, but he opens up his wings wide, and he looks up, knowing that there is light at the end of that tunnel, and he uses that storm to take him to new heights. And you might not see your blessing right now. You might be like Peter. Going down, looking at your circumstances, looking at your finances, looking at your relationship, looking at all that stuff that's going on in your life. And God said, man, keep your eyes on me. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Keep your eyes on me. Because when you keep your eyes on me, you will not be moved. The Bible says to be unmovable and unshakable. Be like that palm tree, man. That life might have you bent, but you're not broken. Eventually, you will bounce back up in the name of Jesus. Is there any bounce back power people in this house that you know that you've been down, but you can bounce back in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Praise God. In closing, I want to give you this opportunity. Yes, Lord. If you could stand with me, I'd appreciate it. I want to give you this opportunity. We won't take long. You don't got to come to the front right there where you are at. That's it. We're going to be quick, but we're going to be effective. Because God works immediately. And for this is for everybody. Whether you know God, whether you don't know God, you've had a relationship your entire life. You need to have courage to leave from where you are at now to inherit the bigger blessing and calling that is ahead of you. But you gotta leave. You can't have that and stay here. You need to leave. You need to go. You need to move. And if you're ready for the Great Commission to start moving and to start working and to start utilizing what is down deep inside of you to better the kingdom of God, then I want you to say this prayer. And if you truly mean it, I guarantee you the Lord will begin to work in your favor immediately. Somebody say it's going to happen immediately. It's going to happen immediately and it's going to happen when it's dark. It's going to happen when you're broken. It's going to happen when you have a broken heart. It's going to happen when you're divorced. It's going to happen when you're sick. It's going to happen just like it did for Elijah. So if you're ready, say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. For I know that I am a sinner. For I know that I'm a sinner. I want my name. I want my name. Written. Written. In the book of life. In the book of life. Father. Father. Give me direction. Give me direction. To go eastward. To go eastward. Because I'm moving. Because I'm moving. And I'm going. And I'm going. And I'm ready. And I'm ready. For this challenge. For this challenge. Father, Father, I know, I know that at the proper time, at the proper time, I will inherit, I will inherit my blessing, my blessing. Thank you, thank you for everything, for, everything. for what you have done, everything. but for what you are going to continue to do. In Jesus' name, I pray. Everybody says, Amen. Hallelujah! Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus.